Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Again, let me go back here. My name is Gina Schlesselman Tarango. Um, I'm a librarian at the FAO Library. This is my email address in case you have any follow up questions for me. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat as well. Um, because as I mentioned, we're going to cover a lot really quickly. And so if there's something that you forget or you need a little extra help with later, feel free to email me. Um, the other thing is that I have created an online guide um, that's sort of a companion guide to this workshop. Um, we're not going to be working off of the guide, but I do want you to know that that's available for you as a resource. It contains a lot more information than what I'm going to have time to cover today. So I'm going to pull up, let me see here. Um, I'm going to pull up the Cal State website and I'm going to navigate to the library link right here. And right now I'm showing you how to get to that guide. Um, if you scroll to the middle of the library's page here, it says library guides. I'm going to open that up. And what library guides are, are um, essentially web pages that the various librarians have put together with resources or search tips on a particular topic. So I've created one just for this workshop. To get to it, you will scroll down to research skills right here on sort of the bottom right. And then we will navigate down to find resources for your finals. And I'm gonna go ahead and share this link in the chat so you have this too. As I said, it contains a lot more information that, than what I will have time to cover today. This is where I'll also put the recording so you can review that. Um, and each of these tabs at the top has a lot of detail about the different type of sources that we're gonna talk about today. Scholarly, popular books, even has pictures of our lockers, which I'll talk about today, um, statistics, and then how to get research help. So I'm not going to sort of toggle back and forth between the presentation and this guide, but I want you to know that that's there for you. Okay, so let's go back here to our presentation. So today's goals are to identify the differences among and uses of the four different types of sources that are listed here. Um, these are the four types of sources that in my experience with students are the ones that um, our professors typically ask us to use. So I want to make sure I hit those big four. Um, you'll also learn how to um, not only locate those types of sources, but also understand why they're found in different places. I know that sometimes it's easy to get into research habits where you go to one place for everything, but that's not necessarily how information is organized. And so hopefully by the end of today's session, you'll have a greater understanding and appreciation for that. And then um, we'll also cover um, how to get research help. College research is really tough. Um, it's easy to get stuck. It happens to me and I'm a professional researcher. So when you get stuck, um, I want you all to know where, where to go because we're, we're always happy to help you. So there are some things we're not going to cover today. Um, we're not going to cover citation resources, citation styles. Don't have time for that. We're not going to talk about streaming video or checking out equipment from the library. We're not going to talk about study spaces or tutoring services or the writing center or study skills, some of those other things you might need for finals. That's just beyond the scope of the workshop. Um, if you have questions about any of these things, um, I will hang out a little bit um, after the workshop when we're done today, so I'll, I can field some of those questions. But um, like I said, this is beyond the scope of what we have time for today. So let's go ahead and um, do a quick warm up together. I always like to get a feel of where everyone is at as far as what they need. Hopefully I can address most of what we need today. So the question here is what types of sources do you need for your finals? And we are actually gonna use a tool called Padlet. You might have used this in a class before. I'm gonna put the link in the chat. There you go. Um, when you click on that, what you will see is this screen. And on the left, here's that same question. What types of sources do you need for your finals? And to answer this, you're simply going to click on this plus sign and then type in your answer and hit return, or actually click on the screen, and then we'll all be able to see it together. Um, this is completely anonymous, so you, we, I won't know your name, no one else will know your name, so you don't have to feel silly if, if you're you know, using the right words or whatever. So go ahead and take a moment to open that link in the chat, 
you will see the screen that we're all looking at and answer this question. What types of sources do you need for your finals? I'll give everyone a couple minutes. All right, I see a couple of people here. Um, again, to, to go ahead and answer this, you're going to click on the plus sign to add your own comment. All right, let's take about another 30 seconds to wrap up our posts. All right, so thank you for everyone who participated. So I see a couple of um, comments about study groups. So again, that's not what this workshop covers. Um, we are covering resources. So finding resources that you might use for a paper or a speech, for example. Um, same with study guides, we're not really gonna talk about that. Um, we will talk about how to find books. So you might be able to uh, um, search the library for certain study guides that we might have. Um, but our focus is not going to be on study guides um, or study rooms. Again, if you want to hang around after the workshop, I can spend a few minutes um, pointing a few things out. But really, the focus is doing um, research. Um, someone says scholarly articles, so we're definitely going to talk about that. Um, so if you are one of the people who is interested in groups or guides um, and you feel like this workshop might not be what you need, totally fine to leave if, if you would rather use this time doing something else. I just want to be fully transparent about what this workshop is and what it what it isn't, right? Okay, so thanks guys for that. Um, I'm going to go back to my presentation here. And we're going to dive in with our different types of resources. Um, so the first type that we're going to be discussing today is those scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles. So journal articles, if you've ever been exposed to these in a, in a class or your professor has maybe asked you to read one, um, the reason is that they are written by credible researchers or scholars. Um, they're written by people with PhDs. Oftentimes, these are the same people who are our college professors working at universities. Scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles often contain a lot of description and analysis. Um, so they can be 20, 30 pages in length. They are vetted by experts, meaning that other experts, other scholars and researchers have reviewed them and set, signed off on them. That's what we mean by the peer review process. Um, say, say a scholar submits a journal article to a journal, they're going to find other scholars in that same discipline to review it. And so that's what we mean by peer review. Peer-reviewed journal articles are a preferred source in academia and college because they are written by experts, they're vetted, they have a certain level of credibility. Um, of course, they're not necessarily perfect. Um, nothing is, but it's sort of the best type of system we have right now. Because of that, they are highly valuable um, and they are behind a paywall. If you have ever Googled, you know, tried to find a scholarly journal article, you might have been asked to pay money 
that's you hitting that paywall. So for scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles, you always will want to go through the FAO Library's website to access these. Um, and that is because we have paid as a library for subscriptions to these very various journals and places to get them. So you should never have to pay anything. If you take nothing else away from today's workshop, it's that um, you are not, you should not pay for anything. We will get these articles for you. Even if we don't have them, we will get them for you for free. So I'm going to pop into the library's website and show you a couple of ways to get these peer reviewed journal articles. All right. So let's see here. I've got all my windows open. I'm going to go back to the library's website. <clears throat> it's csusb.edu slash library. And the first place I'm going to look is OneSearch up here. This is this big white search bar. OneSearch, I like to call it our mother database. It searches almost every single thing that the library has in one fell swoop. So if you really want to get an idea of everything that might be available to you, um, go ahead and type your search in OneSearch. So let's say that I am interested in looking into indigenous history, which is really broad, um, but just for the purposes of today, we'll, go, we'll start with this pretty broad search. Um, notice that we have these options pop up. I want you to click on articles. This way we're getting rid of books or any other type of source that we don't need. And we have, you can see, more than 875,000 results, right? Remember, one search searches everything. So you're really, really dipping into a, dipping your bucket into an ocean in a, in a sense. Um, so the first thing you want to do if you're looking for scholarly peer-reviewed articles is pop over to the left where it says available at CSUSB, click peer-reviewed journals. That's going to ensure everything we see here is now a peer-reviewed article published in a peer-reviewed journal. And that's the big step. That's kind of it. After that, to get the article, um, for example, you'll click on the title. And there's a lot here. You'll definitely want to explore this page, but because we're under a time crunch, I just want to focus out or point out where it says here, available online at. Hope you all can see that. And then this link pops you into the database where the, where the journal article is. So if I click on this, here we go. Here we have the article itself. Sometimes when you open this up, um, you'll need to maybe click on the download a PDF. Oh, here we go up here. Um, databases sometimes look a little different, but follow that link and you will be able to access it. So that was an online article that we have. On occasion, as I mentioned, we might not have the article in the databases that we pay for. So this first one is an example. If I click on it, notice here it says FAO Library does not have a copy. So a couple of options are presented here. One says check for a free version in Google Scholar, which you can do because sometimes people will maybe scan the article or it might be on a, you know the author's website or something, it might be freely available. So always check that. If you can't find it through Google Scholar, you will click get this article through interlibrary loan. This is what I was talking about when I said, if we don't have it, we'll get it for you for free. Libraries like to share, thankfully. So we will find it from another academic library and you will get an email with um, a PDF of that article within a couple days. It's pretty fast. Again, it's free. It's usually a very seamless process. So take advantage of it. Y'all are paying tuition, um, which means that uh, this is a service that you should take advantage of. All right, so that is one search in a nutshell. The other place to get scholarly peer reviewed articles is to go into a specific database. I'm gonna go to the library's homepage. Databases are, they're like OneSearch, but they're a little more specific. Um, so let me show you here. I'm gonna go to choose a database. This tile here, it has the library building. 
And we have a couple of options. If you know the name of the database, so for example, if your professor tells you to use a particular database, we have databases A to Z, and you can go ahead and click the letter and then navigate to the one you want. The other option is to pick a database based on the subject that you're looking at. So let's say we have a criminal justice topic. I can click on criminal justice and I will get a list of databases. I don't have time to go over more than one, so let me just quickly pop into the first one. And we have a search bar up here. Again, the databases might look a little different, but the principles are the same. So let's do indigenous policing, and we're gonna do our search. This time we only have 99 results. Um, again, that's because one search searched like everything, and this is really specific. Um, and again, on the left, you will want to navigate to where it says scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Sometimes it might say academic journals or just scholarly journals. It's all the same thing. This is gonna limit what you see to those peer-reviewed academic scholarly articles. Um, <clears throat> and then the process is pretty similar. You'll click on the title. And in this database, um, it actually provides you with a PDF over here on the left. And that's, that's it, you open up that PDF. Sometimes you don't see that PDF, this one for example, but what you will do instead is still, still click this um, box that says search for full text. And what this is gonna do is gonna pop us into one search and provide us with those options for getting it. So in this case, yay, we have it. You would just link over to this other database. If it says we don't have it, you'll again be presented with that option to um, either find it in Google Scholar or request it for free through interlibrary loan. All right. I am gonna pause here really quick for any questions because we're gonna move on to our next source type. So feel free to um, use the chat or if you have a microphone, any questions at this point. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on then. So we're moving on to popular sources. Um, popular sources are the types of sources you might see in the news or um, the type of source you might find online through a Google search. Popular sources are written by people with a range of expertise. That's because popular sources include magazine articles, newspaper articles, um, blogs, could even include social media. There's a really wide range of things. Um, could be film and documentaries could also be popular sources. Because these types of sources are so, um, there's so many different types, they are written by people with, with um, varying levels of expertise, right? So anyone can tweet, <laughs> but only certain, you know, people with background in journalism and the natural sciences would probably be um, selected to write for National Geographic, for example. So it really depends on the source you're looking at. They have varying levels of description and analysis, right? Again, a tweet is super short, but a cover story in a magazine might be, you know, three, four, five pages long. Um, there is less vetting compared to those scholarly sources. Usually if you have a magazine, for example, again, I'll go with National Geographic, there is gonna be someone you know, fact checking, um, reading it for copy editing. There's gonna be an editor, same with newspaper articles, but it's not gonna be the same level that you get with the peer review process. Popular sources are great for summaries of events, things that happened, um, pop culture, Sometimes even our professors ask us to use popular sources to do content analysis. So for example, our professors might say, you know what, I want you to look at how um, a certain political figure was treated by the media or you know, what they covered. So I want you to look at these news articles from the election and write about that. Um, so there, there certainly are cases where the, these are the types of sources that your professors want you to use. It really just depends on the assignment. Um, some popular sources are free online, right? Um, I can go ahead and look up um, an article 
you know, po posted on CNN's website, and some are behind a paywall. For example, I love to look at the LA Times, but I know I only get a certain number of free articles before they ask me to subscribe. So again, there's really a wide range of ways to get this information. You should know, however, that the library's databases um, do have, um, or some of them, excuse me, some of the library's databases do have popular sources. When it's not just all scholarly content. So I'm going to go back to um, the library's homepage. Excuse all my navigating here. Um, and we're going to start with one search. So let's say we are interested in recent a recent news or mag magazine article about Thanksgiving, um, let's say Thanksgiving and COVID-19, right? That's a relevant topic. So we're gonna stick with articles. And instead of selecting peer reviewed journals like we did before, under resource type, we have newspaper articles. There might be some more options here. Yeah, newspaper articles is gonna be good for one search. So we'll click apply filter. And then here we have, for example, this first one is from the Washington Post. The second one is from the New York Times. So OneSearch has um, a lot of newspaper content that will be good that you might not be able to get for free online. So that's one option. Um, some of our other databases also have that uh, newspaper or, ma or magazine box that you can click to narrow those results. The other option, of course, is to use good old Google. And I always like to point this out because sometimes I'm surprised that students aren't necessarily aware of this. So we'll do Thanksgiving COVID-19. And you know we're going to get like millions of results because we just Googled. Yep. Um, but what I always like to point out is you can navigate over to news at the top. And we, we get now only news sources through Google. The other really cool thing about this too is if we pop over to tools and we can go to recent, this gives us a time frame. So you might be like, you know, I saw there was some article, it was published yesterday. Um, so you can click 24 hours, for example, and narrow it down. And of course, you can also go to a news source's website or a magazine's website and search within the website. Um, a good Google alternative, if anyone is a little nervous about Google's privacy policy, is called DuckDuckGo. And it works the same way. Um, it's just they don't track you. They don't show you ads like Google does. So I always just love to point this out. Um, DuckDuckGo is my personal go to search engine, um, but it has the exact same features up here at the top. We'll just go over to news and then here you can select the time past day, for example, and get um, recent news. So it's so sometimes a good idea if, if you are looking for news to use both Google and DuckDuckGo because they're not necessarily going to contain the same things. All right, so that's popular sources in a nutshell. <clears throat> I'm going to move to books. All right. So books, of course, are writ written by people with a range of expertise. Um, there's books about everything under the sun, right? Some books are scholarly and some are just for fun. Um, usually there is some level of editorial process with books, right? There's usually someone who's looking it over, um, but it's not the same process as peer review necessarily. Books, um, if you are looking at an academic book, can be really good for in-depth coverage of a topic. Um, there might be a whole book about the Civil War and each chapter is about a specific moment, for example, whereas a scholarly article is maybe gonna be about something really, really specific and not provide sort of that broad overview. Um, just like with print books, um, they're not necessarily out there for free. So most eBooks are behind a paywall of some sort. And so that's another reason with, with books, you wanna use the library because we have provided them to you for free. So um, usually with print books, for example, you would be able to walk into the library, but we're in the middle of a pandemic, as I'm sure you know, our library is closed. And so I'm gonna show you how to request a book be put in our locker system so you can pick that up. And I'll also show you how to find eBooks through the library's website. So let's go ahead 
and go back to the library's homepage. And for any time you want books, you're going to use OneSearch. So let's again, let's stick with indigenous history as a topic. And instead of articles, we are interested in books and media at CSUSB. Okay, so I want to find one here that we have only in the library to walk you through how to request a print book through our locker system. Here we go. So this one here, colonialism and culture, if I click on it. So you can see under location information, it says Pfau Library fifth floor. It does not say available online. So that tells me this book is, it's print, it's a physical book and it's only available in the library. So what I will do is sign in for more options. All right, and now I see this magical little link that says request. So if I click on request, what it's going to do is prompt you to select your pickup location. So you can pick it up at the, the main campus file library or the Palm Desert campus. So if you're out there, we haven't forgotten about you. Um, you can provide not needed after, you know, a date and comment. And then all you do is re hit request. What will happen um, within, um, within a day is you will get an email saying, um, that, hey, we, ha we have your book, we've put it in a locker for you. This is the locker number and this is the code. And so what you will do, and it will provide more information about where those lockers are. Um, at, at the San Bernardino campus, for example, they're facing, um, they're in the entrance of the library facing the mountains. So they're on the north side. Um, but all that information will be in that email for you. Um, you they'll give you a certain time frame to pick it up. Um, you'll enter that code. It's completely contact free. Please know that also we are quarantining our books after they are returned just to make sure that um, it's a safe process for you. So um, that is available. However, if we've got your book electronically, that's going to be easier, right? You won't have to come to campus. So <clears throat> Let's, let's look at one of those. This one, for example, Lakota America, A New History of Indigenous Power. We'll click on the title. And this one says available online at, and this is the exact same process um, that you would use to get an article. You would click on the link. It will take you to the database where the ebook lives. Um, and then you will be able to go ahead and read it. And in the case of this database, JSTOR, um, you can click read online or download um, PDF for these particular sections. Most databases um, do not allow you to download the whole book simply because that's in violation of copyright, but usually you'll be able to download a certain number of pages or a certain number of chapters. Um, but yeah, ebooks are great because, of course, again, you don't have to come to campus. You can read them anytime. Um, on occasion, our ebooks are limited to a certain number of simultaneous users, meaning that, for example, only four people can be reading it at the same time. And that's just because of the li license we were able to get. So if you ever if you ever try to access an ebook and it says, oh, it's not currently available, that's very likely what's happening. Just give it an hour or so um, and then. Try, try to read it later. But of course, if you have any questions about that, um, you can always contact me. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause again before we move on to our last source statistics. Do you have any questions about books or popular sources for me? Hello? Yes. Uh, yes, my name is Marsha Richardson. Can you hear me? I can. Hi, Marsha. Hi. Um, you know, I need a, a, a Pacific, like two chapters for my final. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to just uh, get copies of the, the two chapters. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. So if it's a book we have, we don't have a scanning service. Um, you would need to request the whole book. However, if it's a book, <clears throat> well, let me see. Yeah, it's the, the instructor gave everybody the same exact assignment on, on uh -huh. the same book. 
Uh, oh. So I don't think we can all check it out. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, hmm. In normal times, <laughs> when we yeah. are in a pandemic, right, what we could do is request the book from another library, but that service is, is on hold right now. So if that book's checked out, unfortunately, I think um, you'll need to get it somewhere else. Maybe the professor would be willing to scan those chapters and put them on Blackboard. You, you know, it's always worth asking. Okay, so I just need to contact the library to see, because this is my first time ever using a, a library. So um, what you would want to do is um, look up the name of the book, like I just showed you, and see if we have it, because it could be that we have it electronically as an ebook, and then you could just view those online. Um, if it's a print book, you can request it through that locker system if, if no one else has it checked out. Um, and like I said, it's usually just a day or two and that'll be ready for you to, to pick up. But we don't have a service where we will scan particular sections. We just don't have the staffing right now. Okay, so but if it's an ebook, can I print from it? Um, usually with ebooks, um, they the way copyright works is that you can print a, uh, or print or download a specific percentage of the book. Um, and so when you're in there, um, usually there's an option for download PDF or download this chapter. So if it's just two chapters, I'm thinking you should be okay. But again, it depends on the length of the book. But if you, if you encounter that, just shoot me an email. I'll put my email in chat and then I can um, try to see what, you know, what our options are. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. All right, so let's move on to stats and data. I wanna make sure we wrap up by 1045. So um, stats are gathered by a wide variety of bodies for various reasons. Um, and by bodies, I mean organizations, institutions, governments. Um, data is really good for a snapshot of an issue. So for example, in this image, I've got the John Hopkins University COVID tracker. We can see right here in the image that on this day, there were 58, more than 5,800 deaths. And then of course you can see trends over time. Maybe there were more deaths the day before or fewer. Most of the data or statistics that um, is funded by governments and, and usually nonprofits is going to be freely available for public use. That's because in the case of the government, we're all paying taxes and that information is paid for us, the people, and so it is provided to us, the people. And that's really going to be the type of information that we're focused on today. There is some data and some stats that that is behind a paywall or restricted, and that's very rare and typically not the type of thing that students are going to need for, the, for their finals. That's going to be more like professional researchers by your professors, and they have to work with agencies and pay for that. But again, that's not really our concern today. So let me show you <clears throat> my favorite trick for finding stats. And we're actually gonna go back to good old Google for that. Like I said, a lot of this data is going to be freely available, especially if it's paid, funded by the government or collected by the government. So it should be available to us through a general search engine like Google, Google or DuckDuckGo. So here is my fancy little trick. Let's say we're looking at domestic violence and we want statistics. So we'll type in our topic, domestic violence and statistics. And then this is my fancy thing. <laughs> we're gonna do site, S-I-T-E colon dot G-O-V, no spaces, site colon dot G-O-V. I'm gonna hit search. What I've done here is tell me I want domestic violence stats from only government sites, from sites that have .gov in their domain, which means I'm getting rid of all the other stuff that Google might pull up. Um, and I know that everything here is from a site that is affiliated with the government somehow. So this first one, intimate partner violence is from, I can see the CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, down here I have domestic violence stats from the National Institutes of Health, family violence stats from the Bureau of Justice and Statistics, and so on and so forth. Of course, as students, you always want to think critically about anything you see, but um, we know that typically the government is a fairly reliable source when it comes to um, statistics and those, those fast facts and those numbers that you want. So that's a really good way to sort of do a, what we call a smart Google search. 
you can you can change this domain. So instead of .gov, you could do .org, and then we'll get information from organizations. So maybe the, some of those nonprofits, for example, that I mentioned earlier, that might be collecting statistics. Um, again, you need to think critically about the sites, though, because you know there might be an organization out there that's incredibly biased. They still have a .org domain, so it's up to you to evaluate your sources. But this pretty quickly narrows down our results here for you. So we have like safehorizon.org, thehotline.org, uh, do something.org. Again, I'm not necessarily saying these are all reliable sources, but it helps us get rid of all the extra stuff we'd normally get with a Google search. And you can do the same type of trick using DuckDuckGo, that Google alternative that doesn't necessarily track you in the same way. Um, or doesn't have the same sort of privacy concerns that a product like Google has. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and share that research guide link. I know we had a lot of people come in late, so I'm just gonna review this with everyone. At the beginning of our session today, oops, if I could type, there we go. Um, I said that I have everything that was covered in today's workshop in a library guide. And a library guide can be found in the center of the library's homepage. And these are essentially web, web, little web pages librarians have put together on particular topics. So if we scroll down to research skills, I have one for this, this workshop, find resources for your finals. And it walks you through every single thing I covered today and more. So for example, if we go to our books tab, I have like pictures of those lockers and step-by-step -step instructions about how to use them. I've got some videos, et cetera. I'm gonna go ahead and share this link in the chat with you so that um, you can use it to sort of review what we covered if you need to, or if you need more information. The last thing today is that I wanna make sure you know how to get research help if and when you need it for this semester and beyond. So from the library's website on the right, we have an Ask a Librarian option. And this is an option where you can actually chat live with a librarian. It's not a robot, it could be me, so be kind. Um, and we can help you out. This is really good if, if you're like, hey, this link won't open or I need help seeing if you have this book. Um, really good for sort of quick things. If you have a more in-depth question or research assignments, Directly below Ask a Librarian is our research appointments option. And so if you click on that, what this will allow you to do is set up a one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment with a librarian. Um, and so over here, you can select this a particular staff person or it just defaults to no preference. And then you would pick your date and your time. Um, and then whoever you're connected with will send you a Zoom link and it'll be just like this. We would um, chat about your, your question or your research assignment one-on-one -on -one for 30 minutes. Um, so a lot of students are taking advantage of that since we're, we're all online right now, right? And they can't actually walk up to us in the library. So those are two options. Um, I already pointed out library guides. We have a bunch on a bunch of different topics. So, you know, feel free to um, explore those. I know you all were able to get to our workshops, but if we click on this workshops tile, we have over here our recorded online workshops and our recorded citation style workshops that you can view on our YouTube channel. Um, if you, there's any earlier in the semester that you didn't really get a chance to attend, they're all recorded here for you. All right, so I'm gonna take some questions now. Um, we have just a couple of minutes. 